Hello, this is Erica Stella, editor of Soul Magazine, and welcome to episode 41 of In the Spray Room, our podcast where we showcase the best and brightest artists getting up on the streets today. We're bringing out the lighter side of these creatives by interviewing them in a less structured environment, my Brooklyn dining room table. For our daily online content, please check us out on soldmagny.com. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Sold Mag. Today's crew consists of myself, Bike Girl. Hello. Our co-founder and welcoming back, JPO. Hey, guys. And my Valentine, Big Ronnie. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Before we introduce today's very special guest, Big Ronnie, tell us what's going on. A couple of quick updates uh, for all you Chris RWK fans out there, people looking for some fun stuff to do around his Black Book Diaries show next Thursday. They are having a pop-up uh, at 23 Warren Street. Merch, merch, merch. Go support those guys. We'll be at the show Thursday night. That should be a lot of fun. And I'd also like to remind everybody about Connie's show at Third Ethos featuring... The tattoo-focused shows, Chris Garver and some other interesting people are in that show. Yeah, that opened on Friday night, but there's still a lot of time to check it out. So yeah, I'm looking forward to going over there. Uh, I, there was one little, uh, I don't know the name of the boy, like a Fushiki doll, I think they call them, and the sides of the doll were all tattooed. You see that, like Japanese yeah, yeah, traditional stuff? Piece. Very fun I mean, stuff. We're talking an incredible lineup of artists for that show so well i hope some of those artists are listening because our guest today has a little bit of tattoo knowledge not just personal but also this is one of the things that we are promoting for this gentleman today dave navarro is joining us on the podcast good afternoon sir thanks nice to see you so let's stay on the tattoo subject for a second so you have there's a show where Chris Garber's collabing with somebody. It, he has a piece in a group show at Third Ethos in Brooklyn right okay. now. Okay, awesome. On. He's fantastic. No kidding. One of the best traditional Japanese artists around. The show is sure. all entirely Japanese tattoo artists. Yeah, I would imagine. It, it's like the lineup is probably one of the best groups that have ever been put together in New York. That's exciting. Yeah, definitely exciting and worth checking. Is it out. from all over the world or is it just? From the States. I, I know. It's international artists for oh, sure. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Now, I am... I'm the contrarian on this subject. Okay. How so? I appreciate and uh, prefer tattooed women, <laughs> but I'm from the Kim Kardashian school that you don't put a bumper sticker on a Maserati, my man. Oh, that... Yeah, clearly. You know what I mean? Clearly. <laughs> he is yeah. blank canvas. Well, at this point... I don't know. At this point... That kind of puts you as the diamond in the rough, so yeah. to speak. You know what I mean? I think we all have like here. When I have One like, okay, so we ran into each other last night and my friend, the girl I was with, doesn't have a single tattoo. I think that's a lot more uncommon these days. Unicorns we yeah, are. Somewhat. Yeah. Oh, here's the a rarity uh, for the for show. Sure. Now, JPO, you have been a tattoo prop proponent and one somebody that's been adding ink since I know you. Yep. Now, I heard something going around the my apartment this week <laughs> oh, that boy. you and Erica are going to get some kind of matching tattoos at some You're point. You're just lucky you, you you skated that one yesterday on Valentine's Day. Yeah, no, not me. No, that would be a no-go But I'm just me. saying. I would not put a, a, a someone's name on, on Oh, it. really? But there could be a matching item. Yeah. I have uh, gotten tattoos with people. That we got done at the same time. They aren't the exact same tattoo, yeah. but um, by the same artist. So we remember those times. And I always remember the people that were there when I got the tattoo. So I don't have, but I don't have any. Yeah, as long as it's not matching. a property tattoo, like, right. hey, this is, you know. <laughs> right. I really don't know that that matters ultimately. Mm -hmm. I guess not. You know what I mean? I mean, it depends on what kind of energy you bring to the, the tattoo. Yeah. You know, I used to have all kinds of ideas about what they meant and, and what I was getting tattooed for. And, you know, it, as I got older, just the quality of tattoo I got was what mattered more than the meaning. Yeah. So I'm there, too. You know it. what I mean? Yep. So, like, as a non-tattooer, the less I put into the tattoo, the better it turned out. Yeah. I do you know it more for saying? the artwork now than, than the meaning behind it. It's more of like a place mark for my life at that, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that. You know, if you think about any tattoo, for the most part, most of them is a collab for the artist. Absolutely. You yep. know, because it's very rare 
that they're going to get an, a, a client to come in and say, do whatever you want on my entire back. Yeah. Which is probably what they would excel at. Yeah. <laughs> you know and, what I mean? And what I like now to do is try to get like a rarity tattoo, meaning like I saw like a, an artist I sought after to, oh, to yeah. get some of his work. Like the last tattoo I got was from uh, an artist. He lives in Mexico, originally from, I believe, Venezuela. Um, he goes by Topo. Okay. And it took me three years yeah. to get his ink. Yeah. So I was like, wow, this is so awesome. And it was an experience. I like, I had an event to be at. I like pushed that off just to like get the, you know, get this tattoo done. So it's literally like collecting a piece of original art. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes you it's your gallery. wait till the artist has time to create it for you. So same thing. Absolutely. Now, as I run through the 70 topics in my head that I mm. want to bring up on this chat today, <laughs> Erica here was also on New York Inc., she got a tattoo from Megan Massacre on the show. Oh, you're kidding. I didn't even know that. Wow, that's awesome. Let's see it. Oh, I show have, them. It's on my I'll back. tell the story. No, is it, it's, is it's it still in there? Do you still love it? it oh, here we go. Another. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> talk about this. this is what happens to people who want to get tattooed for free on television. Uh, All right. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, we paid yeah. for Hold this on. one. Oh, I bet you did. Different, in different spades. In a different situation. We did pay for it. Yeah. The reason you're um, still paying for it <laughs> every day. <laughs> I, I, let's see. I really the the biggest um, thing I would I would want to ask you about because I got to tell my story. My name was attached to mm -hmm. it. It was you know at the end of the episode. It was not even five minutes of, of you know how they condense it down. Right. But the experience uh, being tattooed many other times, it was not organic there were cameras all of around course. there was drama being uh, uh stoked of by course. I, the people behind the cameras and um i wonder taking it even to the next level how do these skins feel when the tattoo is timed oh like on my program yeah yeah i'm I, not I, 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 if, I, listen I'm so my curious. job listen first of all when it comes to ink master and i appreciate your story uh -huh. but however you know it wasn't like they didn't spring that on you. You knew damn well it yeah, was going to be yes, filmed, yes. and you knew that it was going to be an unusual experience. Yes, yes. So the and people who come in our show know that, too. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. if you sign up for something that's yeah. a risk and it falls away that isn't, you know, there can go a multitude of ways, and it doesn't go the way that you have planned out in your head. Yeah. That's just life. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's no different than walking into a street tattoo shop and not put it this way. Well, if I you take back the experience. Oh, good, good, good. Oh, I, I, I definitely, I, but just in watching how um, these shows have brought such a great angle to the tattoo uh, culture. Well, I, I think love that, it. It's I very positive. That, but then there is that, oh, they're timing it. Yeah, well, here's the thing. For me, <laughs> what I think that we do and what I like, what I hope to do is uh, highlight other artists out there that they get a massive audience by competing Absolutely. on the show. Absolutely. So they're instantly, their audience increases by however many people see them from night to night. Uh, people who want great tattoos get them for free. And, uh, and in, a, in a strange way, in a turn of events, we inadvertently give the public a, a crash course and a history on tattooing and what to look for because... Uh, yes. That's I, the problem. Go I ahead. I love it. I love the show. We're such fans. We watch from the beginning... But when Chris Nunez starts ripping into yeah. line weight and it's shitty and it's not shitty, I feel so... <laughs> I don't even care about the artist. It's a competition. That's yeah. what they signed up yes. for. Yes. I feel bad for the skin. Everybody well, really Every yeah. time. Fantastic. But here's the thing. Winners, and the, winners, you walk around like you just hit the lotto. Right. But the losers, you must, you must <laughs> think you're, like, you're looking for a cover-up in a couple Most of Most people who are heavily tattooed have bad tattoos. In fact, most yes. tattoo artists... Yes have bad tattoos. You know why? Because they learn, they start fucking around with their kids the in game. the kitchen. Mm -hmm. It's part of the game. It's the hazing. You know, it's the <laughs> shitty tag. You know, it's the shitty tag and you know in the unwanted neighborhood i was always it's the same thing and you got to have that to have it be balanced yeah otherwise you turn into one of these uh, urban outfitter models that ran out and got tattooed head to toe in a week and is just booking ads and it's totally inauthentic the so worst one so for me there's value in bad old tattoos shitty yeah. tattoos they have soul and authenticity they all have a story. maybe in so time bad, yeah good. But immediately, while Chris Nunez <laughs> is slamming the shit, shit in there, out yeah. of everything. Yeah. Well, 
I don't know. I, I, well, I can't a, speak to him, but he speaks the truth. And, yeah. yes. and, and here's, the, here's the, the fact of the matter, and here's how I can and justify that. Because attitude aside, ego aside, opinions aside, delivery aside, at the core, what he's saying is the truth. Agreed. Period. Absolutely. I don't think he's making stuff up. Agreed. And I don't care how it's delivered, and it doesn't have to be, you know, I haven't received the truth, uh, you know, in sweet servings my whole life. You know, Fair I've, enough. I've, I've, I've woken up to some pretty harsh and realities the hard way. Show. And it's television. And if you go on TV to get tattooed by a guy who you don't know who it is for six hours, that's on you, man. Yeah. I, the question <laughs> but, I had. But, however, we're grateful for you and please come back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the second show where they do come back and you put the artists and pit them against each other and have even more fun that's also our show yeah that yes. sounds like us too <laughs> my question is though what level of tattoo artist gets approved to be on the show that i have nothing to do with okay so when it comes to hosting the show or judging the show quote-unquote judging because you can't judge art in terms of What's better art? You know, this isn't better art than that. I have no way of, you know, opinions have to go off the table and it has to come to just the techniques and the technical application and and not hurting the skin. Those are the things, those are the criteria we judge on because you are putting another individual through trauma. I mean, six hours of of skin trauma. It's a lot. And that's easily have some of the best artists in the game have been on the show. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, no one has. Put no it, one has ever been bad. Well, no, that's totally untrue. Bad. That's totally <laughs> no, untrue. I mean, no one has ever lasted that's been bad. By the time, well, you yeah, that's been, true. Had some amazing. That's true. The people that, go all the way to the end are pretty good, but you know, it. Listen, the casting department are not stupid. You know, they hire a vast array of talent levels and, and a vast array of personalities. They know how to make because good TV. they want yeah. good TV. Yep. Say, you know, all yeah. the reality TV shows i think you guys bust each other more than any other show but here's but here's the thing like there's no there's no entertainment value in 16 amazing artists who get along great (laughs) no it sounds like uh there's a dog fight outside there's a peruvian dog sounds like a peruvian bus is about to drive through here with like (laughs) roosters and shit in the back of it when the subway (laughs) runs by (laughs) this is brooklyn brother that's bay ridge baby (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so let's let, let's go back to OG tattooing. How old were you when you got your first one? When I got my first tattoo, I was about 16 or 17 years old. Uh, Los Angeles, Hollywood. Uh, I was in a band called Jane's Addiction. Still am, actually. And uh, went literally back in the 80s. There was no internet. There was no Instagram. There was no checking out some dude's work that took his tattoo into Photoshop and cleaned it up and posted it for the world to see, which, by the way, warning kids, that's what they do. They do that. So don't trust the Instagram picture. Go look at the portfolio. Look at somebody who with a healed tattoo on their skin. Um, But back in those days, we had no way of knowing anything. It was like yellow pages and show up. And uh, I happened to walk into the shop of a guy named Bob Roberts, who's one of the premier guys and you know just history legendary status like cut from the old school cloth of uh, that really is dying you know that that whole weight that gravity of the art and the craft is is dying and so one of the things that oliver and chris on our program are really good at is making sure that we still keep that intact and whether it makes air or not when we talk to the, the competitors, we're talking about uh, the history. We're talking about apprenticeships. We're talking about you know going through, getting the, the tools at a rate that is applicable to become the best artist they can become. All right, but the best artist that they can become, shouldn't that, that shouldn't be up to a judge. If I were to judge you on your guitar skills... I want you to play some Mississippi Delta yeah. Blues. I well, want you to play some I'll tell you what. If I enter... I if I enter... Your, However, if I enter that competition, that's on me. Mm-hmm. I entered it. If he I could play guitar all the world listen. Guitar competition, yeah, he's no, going to be listen, to there's no doubt I it. would never enter a competition like this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fucking do that shit. You crazy? No fucking way. But these kids are from a different world. They grew up online. Yeah. I grew up at a time where I had privacy. 
Yeah. You know, I grew up at a time where like I didn't make mistakes out loud in front of millions of people. Yeah, I still do, but you know what I'm saying? Like all the oh. stuff that I grew up with. I thank the world every day that I didn't grow up in the time of Facebook. It's terrible. It's terrible. Now and now it's not only the mistakes you make now, but now they can go back and dig up the old mistakes you made and f- destroy you over those too. Which is like on a spiritual level, so profoundly terrible because it's, we're saying you're not allowed to evolve and become a, a true, uh, you know, uh, forgiven human being and evolve and learn how to become a useful person in society. Because remember that time when you were 13 and you made that tweet where you used a uh, a racist slur or you may have made some kind of homophobic remark on Twitter. Your career's over now at 26. Yeah, that is not the kind of world I want to live in. Right. And that's why if we get back to what's happening today in the street and why I'm so active and excited about what's going on in the street now is because we are at the crossroads of either it's time to to take it down or be taken down. And it's the creatives that spread the word to say, you know what, fucking enough is enough. So this is a Malcolm Gladwell moment for you. This is a tipping point. I hope so. That's what I think. I think so. I mean, you look where we are politically as as we're recording this. There's now a crisis. What a national crisis yeah. at the border. A state of emergency. A state of emergency. State of emergency. Yeah. It's insane, right? Ridiculous. So, so think about we're 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 in a political place where neither side knows what the fuck to do and how to get this guy out. Nobody's happy. Yep. The, the the world has never been more divided. And even if there's supporters of what's happening in, in in the current administration, we're still fucking divided. And that's that's to me the major thing that nobody's catching on to, which I would like to, I guess, kind of have it be part of where I'm coming from, is the fact that if I'm on the extreme left talking about hating the extreme right, I'm just as guilty of hating as the extreme right is of hating me. So now we got to get to a point of acceptance, freedom, tolerance, and yeah, I condemn that behavior, but I don't condemn you. Do you know what I'm saying? If you guys want to go practice shooting guns in the fucking forest and shoot at targets and dress up as militia, well, that's on you. <laughs> just don't come into our fucking town. Yep. Do you know what I'm saying? Like At a certain point, we have to stop the fucking madness. And I, I don't. But that seems like an organized dream for you. It does seem like an organized dream. The, the and street art and and the the collaborations that you're working on seems a little more uh, uh, out of control. It does seem out of control, but it, it is out of it is intentionally out of control. But if you think about it, there has to be some kind of intentional out of control factor and nature to the intention behind some kind of movement for the passerby to. Happened upon you it. You have to disrupt. In order, you know what I mean? Yes. yes. So, like, the beautiful thing about the street art scene is that it has to be experienced. You can't swipe by it. Right. There's no swiping. Even if you find something on a swipeable, uh, you know, platform and if it, it moves you, you're going to want to go see that thing in its environment because the environment, the canvas, also becomes part of the piece. Mm hmm. It, where it lives is the piece, much like a tattoo. Where it lives is a piece. You're the soul of that tattoo. This environment is the soul of that piece, and it can't really be uh, taken in unless you're in that space. It's, it, it, it's an so, actual experience. What happens well, to the pieces as they evolve? And even the deterioration and, and the, and the people coming in afterwards. So I know what you're saying about my involvement having to be a little bit chaotic, but I think it's necessary in order to shake the lives of those who don't live in chaos. Now, I was thinking about, mm. after, after meeting you last night, I didn't, I, I didn't want to try and uh, formulate my questions in advance. I don't like pre-planning anything in life, pretty much. Uh, but Wait, I'm sorry. Is this a problem? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. No, we're laughing at you. Okay. Well, I wanted to ask you last night, the, po- the question that popped into my head is, when you record an album... Mm. That's meant for perpetuity. Yeah. That's meant for yeah. 30 generations from now to have an opinion mm-hmm. about Jane's or RHCP or anything yeah, yeah, yeah. else that you did. And my favorite's the Big Boy song, by the way. Uh, the, the, the Bad Boy, uh, Puffy. You're kidding. Favorite. favorite. Uh, that's fucking great. He ain't going nowhere. Don't get me started. That's my oh favorite. Oh, my God. I got to tell you stories about that. I Doing that on, on Letterman with him? Fucking crazy. 
That guy's a genius. He's fucking crazy. Anyway, guys. Loved it. But I wanted to ask you, since music is made for permanence, never deletion, unless you're R. Kelly and we could talk about your opinions on that subject. Right. But street art is the exact opposite. It's here for a minute. It's here well, for an hour. It's however, here for a week, a day, a month. Right, right, right. But if you put it this way, aha, I got, the, I got the correlation for you, which is the perfect correlation for me. Fine mm. art is the album. Street art is the tour. Mm. Street art is the, the performance. Day. If you were yes, at the show, you know, I like that. That's, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the fucking it. performance. Wow. So there's a visceral connectivity. I didn't expect as good of an answer for that. It's a good answer. I just fantastic. thought of it. Yeah. yeah. Very good answer. Yeah. Thank you. Well, that makes sense to me because there are two, there are two aspects to the musical process that I love and I, they, I can't coexist without I can't exist without the other. And for our listeners, I'm going to give a good example. The live versus studio versions of Tyrone by Erica Badu are mm. completely different yes. experiences. Yes. If you only heard one, you'd almost be missing out. Well, also, if you think about the performance aspect and doing it, doing a song in the studio where you can do it to perfection, where you love it and you know and you're prepared for the public to see it, that's one thing and you take your time with it and there's all the kind of love that goes into that. But when you're doing it in front of eyes, in front of people, and you have the uh, energy the energy, and you have the maybe uh, the trepidation and the fear of getting you know of fucking, fucking it up or, and, and the excitement of doing well or the fear of getting caught or the fear of over spraying or whatever the fuck it is over playing and over spraying are very similar yep. do you know what I mean yep. you look like an idiot either way <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in fact I think right. I just came out with my new piece there you go by the way look for that on Howard Street but uh, <laughs> yeah you know what I mean so I can identify with both and I've, yeah. I've done both you know, I, I got that actually. I, I've been, you know, he, music has been always a, a big um, thing in my life. I understand that when I got into actually jam bands. So I get that. Mm. Um, I, I went to tons of punk rock shows as a kid, but when I got into jam bands, I understood that because for them, every single show is a different show and they'll play, they had their, you know, their their songs Studio they play recording, yeah but but, but people don't really yeah. yeah i mean i've seen bands 30 something times and it's a different show every single time so right but you're also those are jam bands and that's that's when they're doing it in a way that is clear to you but even if they're doing even if i don't care if they're dancing around a tape yeah they're emotionally going through something different every right. night and but it's, some it's nights they're obvious. phoning it in i don't know but some nights i'm phoning it in Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no way you can And I'm hoping it. the other three guys on stage aren't phoning it in so I don't get found out. Yeah. Which is the very same thing as a guy with the the stencil that he's hired by some soft drink company to do a campaign and he's got no fucking interest in it. He's dropping stencils and spraying them and moving on. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. what I'm doing. I'm doing the same thing. Yeah. You know, sometimes you got to make you know, you got to make a living to do the thing you love. Exactly. Well, you 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 there's a pr- you came to our awareness through three artists that don't phone it in, that mm-hmm. consistently take risks, that are always pushing the envelope, and that's Thrashbird, Dirt Cobain, yeah. and Al Diaz. And yeah. let's start with Thrashbird. Well, my, my favorite thing, I met him, I don't know, two years or so ago, Dirt introduced me, but my favorite piece is that big bull board that says, this could be us, but you don't do illegal shit. Yeah, yeah, me too. I mean, it's I just love that. so <laughs> campy, it's so I cheesy, it's, great. it's so perfect. He takes more risks Yes. And he's insane, but in the best kind of insanity. Oh, yeah. Because you have to be a certain amount of insane. But literally, the, the handbags he did on abandoned military bases across the mm-hmm. Southwest. Incredible. I mean, that's just insane. Yes. How did you come across him? Uh, well, I live in Los Angeles, and Thrash is uh, all over L.A. I mean, you can't, you can't, you know, Thrash, I think, has surpassed Angeline in terms of visibility in Los Angeles. Oh, wow. Do you know who Angeline is, right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, I saw one of his pieces done on a, uh, a side of a, a, a facade of a store that I purchased some stereo equipment at as an old, because I'm a vinyl guy. So I, I purchased an old, you know, vinyl system, and the people who own the system installed it and saw my art collection. So they knew. That I'm, I, you know, I, I'm a collector. That I just, you know, my involvement in the arts, my love for the arts. So they forwarded the piece that he did, which I loved, and I instantly reached out to him and commissioned a piece for my home. Cool. So I met him cool. when he came over to do an installation, which was 
the beginning of the end because we became pals and and when uh, was that that was last year i don't remember that i i don't recall but i was here when i commissioned him so i was here uh hanging out with al and danny minnick and some other some other uh new york dudes and that's when i commissioned thrash and so after met after he came over and, and we became pals and he did the piece in my house um we just i started going out and helping him out and yeah, in, far, in terms of those risks, uh, it's an extreme I've, sport. I've ta- yeah, it's I the best. It's the best. It really is yeah. an extreme sport. The adrenaline would be the same it's as amazing. climbing a mountain. Well, yeah. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what it is for me. But if you sound like you have a question, go ahead. I was going to pop back really, really quick yeah. because uh, d- just to hit the vinyl thing, just <sighs> for for me. Yeah. Top three, top five in your collection to you, not to anybody else. I just want to know. Well, I mean, the the problem with that answer is like, well, who's your favorite painter? Who's well, you know? I know like, that's fine. Just but but for the, you, but for me, it's like that's like saying, what mood are you in the most? I guess so. Yeah. I don't know. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, it's, it's different every day. All right, what was the last true. album you pulled out and played? The last album I pulled out and played was um, The Doors live at the Hollywood Bowl. Nice. For me, it was Nancy Sinatra. Oh, good. Yeah, about two weeks ago. You, the last thing you pulled out was two weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, buddy. Yeah. For, for Sorry. M- well, we're we're we're, we're digital. But yeah. Sometimes I like the vinyl too. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. The last yeah. album, album you physically put out. Oh, yes. the last album I physically put on was Ziggy Stardust. Oh, yeah. nice. Uh, yeah. Mine yeah. was uh, Captain Geach and the Shrimp Shack Shooters. There you go. <laughs> Who could forget them? <laughs> <laughs> Was it the same, was it the the pre CBS one? <laughs> Fantastic. That's the that's the one. Now I <laughs> did anybody get that movie reference by the way? No, no, I but I went with it. Oh, yeah. I didn't I even know, get I it. Know. Yeah. I From knew that, you didn't that know the band. I was like, all right, next question. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever seen that thing you do? I mean, it's a fucking classic. JPO, let it go. No, that thing have. you do. He's it's about a one-hit wonder band in, in the six. That thing you do that by Tom Hanks. The Tom Hanks. Uh, yeah, uh, no, it's I phenomenal. Anyway, anyway, it's it's a great movie. Sorry, yeah. guys, for the listeners that know, you had to chuckle. As, as yeah, for, for those of you new to the business, that is what is known as a screeching halt <laughs> in the <laughs> podcast business. <laughs> and I'm really glad That's it true. wasn't my fault, so I'm just going to keep it rolling. So anyway, <laughs> now. When I was doing a little bit of research... Yeah. Now you I, know why I'm not on these things. You know, that's why often. we I'm know fucking. you're not on them often. <laughs> <laughs> so, I heard that you have some experience and some stories about band posters back in the day. Well, I do, but what, to which ones are you talking about? Well, you have to understand, back in the day, 1985, I'm a teenager, my background... I grew up, my dad worked, my dad was senior vice president at Gray Advertising. So he was a straight up, you know, what they called a wrist back in the day, which is a, a wrist is a guy back in like, say, the Mad Men days when it was drafting tables and set and, you know, I mean, the same gear that we have now, but things were placed, ads were placed together on a mat and cut together with exacto blades and rubber cement and put together like that. So my dad did that. And those guys back in those days were called wrists because the implication was that they were replaceable, just like they weren't talents. They were just, yeah. you know, functional yeah. tools. Yeah, Got they were it. tools. It was almost like a, a p- ah, yeah, he's a wrist. Get another wrist in here if, like, if your artist was talking back. So... I grew up in a home with drafting tables and all the equipment I could I could fuck with. You know what I mean? Wow. That, was, that was my my history. And um, so when I got in my band, I was in high school, basically, and I dropped out of high school. Um, I actually got asked to leave because uh, the dean of, of my school called me in and said, why is it if anybody in this school wants drugs, <laughs> they look for Dave Navarro? <laughs> I said, I don't know. I couldn't tell you why they asked that. Clean out your locker. I had to clean out my locker. So anyway, um, so I, I joined the band. I dropped out of high school. And then, you know, the only way to promote yourselves was to physically be out on the street and hand a fucking flyer to someone. You know what I mean? So I had to, you know, the only person in the band that had access to a Xerox machine was me because my dad had the agency. Right. So I would go. I'd be in Hollywood and me and Perry at, back in those days were teenagers and cut together flyers and pull out pictures and tape them together and rubber cement them together. And then I would get the final, what it's like the final tape together collage. 
and yeah. carefully take it over to the Xerox machine and crank them out. And the way that they ended up looking all distorted and all distressed and some of the some of the pages you could see the you know the cut lines. You could see the cut lines in some of them and some of you couldn't. Style. Yeah. Exactly. There was something about that that really it was uh, a style. It was, it was a, style. a style. It was a punk rock style that that yeah. was basically was DIY, just homemade, handmade. And then not only did you have to physically make your own flowers, but then you had to physically hand them out. So you took pride in them because you were going to be the face associated with the actual page. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you're going to just stand there and look someone in the eye and hand this to you. You don't want to hand a stupid looking thing. Right. You, you know what I mean? Like, hey, come see my stupid looking band. Yep. Nobody wants that. You know, right. so you're putting all your efforts into it and staying up late and, you know, going on uh, speed runs and going back to the drawing table quite a bit. But back in those days, uh, you know, we we were relatively unknown. There was a club called the Troubadour. Is that the poster you're talking about in particular? I think that was part of the story, yeah. Well, basically, what, if it is what you're talking about. So we applied to play at this place called the Troubadour, and they're like, yeah, great, you're booked. And we were, we were so excited. We are like, we're going to play. And like up till then, we'd been playing in front of like 10, 20 people at Tops. So we were super excited. And uh, um, so I made the fire, and I ran. I go home, and... and the Troubadour calls us and goes, but if you want to play here, the PA is $250, and the lights are $100, and a microphone is $10, and if you like five microphones, they're $40, and like we started occurring to us, we're going to get gouged on this fucking thing. The whole thing's a scam. Right. This is not set up to support artists. This is a fucking scam. So I, we were flipping out, so I go back to the Xerox machine and the Letra set and I make I take the Troubadour logo out of the paper I put it all together and then I put a little tagline underneath it that says in quotes the Troubadour where you pay to play right is a little like fuck you guys you know yeah. what I mean like if you're gonna fuck us I'm fucking you and so actually I put that in there and then they found the flyer and cancel us pulled the plug on the show how dare you fuck with our branding and I'm still doing it. I did the fucking same thing last night at McDonald's. Was oh, that really? you? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I saw, saw that. it. Yeah. I didn't, so you had a, yeah. something. Art, uh, art I don't talk about. I want to see how long it takes them to notice. That was one of those things where I was like fucking I with. Was slick. Fucking with. That's straight art. Brand, of course it is. Yeah, exactly. fucking with takeover. brand. Takeover. I mean, it was a take. Do you see the, ho the hotel room takeover I did? No. In my no. room? I, oh yeah! I was told I got I, caught for I got finally got caught. I'm not going to tell who told me the story, <laughs> but last night at the show, you so you invited an artist. Yeah, hey, I'm staying here. I kind of want to make it my own. You want to come in and you know make yeah. it like my house. And then and then and then they, the cleaning lady said something, and then that was all over. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what? It's like at this point, look. I, I mean, there's probably not the first hotel room you've technically trashed in your career see i don't think i trashed it i think i made it well, more yeah, valuable I mean, <laughs> I mean, well yeah that's but, true uh, that's you know, the, that's there's the always two ways to look at this things. point yeah. i mean that's the that's the fine line with artists like banksy is how can you actually say he's vandalizing your building when he just gave you something that added so much value to it yeah well i you know i i think it's all valuable I'd and for away. here's and here's my other thing and if you wanted to talk about i don't know why we're Am I taking over this little thing? Sure. You, did oh, you have a question? Go ahead. No, I'm, what I'm... What the I'm, last thing you asked me was the flyers. The band, sh you know, for yeah. the band posters and stuff like that and how that, you know, because you created them and you put them out on the street and, you know, it wasn't just, you know... That it, was your creative outlet at that one, time it, well, on top of music. Visual. Yeah, but it was also our way to say fuck you. Well, right. Back then. Yes. Because nobody wanted the time of day from us. Right. You know, and we were, we were the ones that had the hope and we wanted the change and we wanted to, do you know what I mean? And, and everybody that we went to to help us facilitate that were part of the problem. And that was a really difficult bind to be in. Well, it's, so the same, we, it's the same in the art world too with galleries and such. Oh, I, I, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. It's pay to play in a lot, like especially oh, art who fairs. Your daddy and what it, art school did you go to? Exactly, Period. yeah. The, yeah, the art fairs imagine. are just, it, it's tough. It's a tough business to get in because like like Audrey just said, if if you don't know somebody and you're not connected already, mm. you know it's it's pay to play. They don't have the time of day for young artists. That's why you have so many galleries that pop up and up and down on the Lower East Side because there are people that want to give 
space to new emerging artists, but right. it's in a really hard business. Well, well here's, the, here's the thing that for me about that, and I guess, you know, if you wanted to talk about the piece I did with Al and talk about how that came about, because I was really just kind of on the periphery of, I'm an old school fine art collector, and I have been since the late 80s, early 90s, and uh, just been kind of on the periphery, and, and I was just, I was, I was doing some pieces, and I was, I was fucking around with different friends of mine, and I, I reached out to Al Diaz, who I'd met after uh, meeting him, we have purchased some pieces from him, from my collection, asked him if he'd collaborate on a piece with me, which he did, and, and we ended up putting up at, the, at uh, that We Pay show, the illegal street art show, most illegal street art show. Trademark. And, What's up, Sex Six? Yes, Sex Six. And then, um, so, because it was with Al, and it was a, such a high level of visibility with him, I kind of became outed as a result of it. Like, I wasn't really looking to be necessarily a visible figure of any kind but this i did this piece with a legendary you know visible guy and so um as far as supporting young upcoming artists like you brought up i thought well you know listen instead of trying to make some big splash which is definitely not my intention i could just shine the light on the people who i really admire and inspire me too while i'm you know if i'm already here it you sounds know what like I mean? you're trying not to be the part of the problem that got in your way coming up. Um, maybe, but the arts also saved my life, you know, and wh- whatever el- area of it. So if it, whether it's music, whether it's the visual arts, film, um, uh, literature, all the, any, any uh, type of expression that leads to knowledge or expansion of the mind was something that I was interested in. You know, so uh, if I can share that with somebody else, that's I've done my job. That speaks to the heart of Soul Magazine. Um, JPO uh, created this idea of by artists for artists. Mm -hmm. Um, The the now new online structure is really a a, a lot of street art photographers and consider ourselves artists as well, supporting just what we see and, and we make mistakes along the way but we really just want to look at what we see going on and support everybody and and we, you know we could talk uh, about how Instagram is a, a platform that artists are either succeeding with or failing at or, or having their own it's a, it's a new world for artists um, and, and we want to showcase uh, what we see going on and, and help them because um, it's it, we talk sometimes about uh, MTV in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, the videos mm-hmm. were a new platform for artists, and it some was. artists succeeded, and some artists failed with the music video. Um, and and what Kurt Loder and Tabitha Soren did is something that we kind of are mimicking now in this new mm-hmm. age mm-hmm. for street art. Um, and and we're in New York City, and and that doesn't mean just the New York City artists. So we. We're, we're touching um, street art around the world because it really has grown grown to that level. What, you're, what you just said about by artists, for artists, really is a nice way to, to wrap this up, or not wrap it up, but button this up as the things we were talking about in terms of not being part of the problem, right? So if I think back on my career, if I think back on the early days of Jane's Addiction and, you know, by artists, for artists, it's a beautiful thing to... Because, of course, there's going to be personalities and egos and people aren't going to get along always. Barring those examples, the people who let us down as artists are usually not other artists. It's the people that we're trying to use as the vehicle to to get visibility. So who better than artists to be for artists and support the arts than us because... We, it's the same thing as an alcoholic not being able to share with somebody who isn't an alcoholic. So you're saying you don't blame Dion Warwick, you blame the Psychic Friends Network. Well, that, <laughs> I, I wish I was saying that because that would sound really profound, but I don't consider any of that as. Uh, Did you get that? As art. <laughs> well, if you, if you, there's no mistake that Dion Warwick is entertainment. I make a distinction. That's why things like NSYNC can exist. 
Hey. I always say, if we all like uh, the same things, it that's would right. be crap. Right, 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 right. But if I can let it, in my brain, I can let there, it exist. There if has it's, to be something for 12-year-old girls. Exactly. If it's entertaining to them and it makes them happy, I don't give a fuck. And, and, then, and it, it's another thing that, you know, Sold Magazine, we, we just, we, what we see, we're, we're storytelling and there's a team of us and, and we're, we're trying to cover it all as yeah, best we can. Exactly. All I know Some, is that, go ahead, I'm sorry. I was going to say, all I know is that, my piece got Instagrammed by the dog wearing shoes, and New York Yankee. Yeah, dog. that's yeah. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Which one? DS Club. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. DS oh Club. yeah. Doggy sitters. So yeah. all I know. Dave, Dave, now you're me. hitting it big you time, and that's all I know. I'm saying. Big time. I, once I saw that, I was like, I could wrap it all up. DS Club means you've it's made it. Dog wearing so shoes. I Welcome know, to the club. I've arrived. I know the names of most of those dogs because he tags me in my post <laughs> so, so often and I love him. He's great. One thing I will tell you is that the East Coast art community versus the West oh, Coast art community. Let's talk about it. Oh, yeah. It's just, well, it's just more immediate and and, uh, and visceral and it, LA is just so spread out. You know, for, for something that's so word of mouth and vis and, and visual like you know vision oriented and uh, this is also mecca in some yeah. ways everybody in the world eventually has to get up in New York to to well, claim you, to be a street artist. Well, well, here's the thing: you're crammed in this island, right? So you can literally hit like what three shows last night? Somebody, somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. So and, and they're literally you know ten ten minutes apart or even fucking next door to each other. You know, in, in some some cases. And and that's what why it is the matter. But I think I think another reason for that, if I for speaking to in L.A. is that you can hit three shows here in L.A. Getting to one right. is is a challenge, and then you know what I mean because it's like you got to get ready, you got to get over there, you got to fuck what you're gonna park, you know, find, you know, it's like it's in the time it takes you to get to one, you can hit three here. Exactly. So I think that that makes it a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, more attainable here to just kind of get in the shit. You heard it here, folks. L.A. sucks balls. New York oh, rocks. Uh, I, I think also it's. Also I, I would. I would get behind more, that. I would get behind that. In more really words than one. Yeah. For driving, for shows, for traveling, it's prettier. Don't get me wrong. Traveling around. I'll tell you, there's nicer. If, if, you want. You want to know a fucking Brooklyn? But I don't want to do. I have a theory about why L.A. is so energetically fucked. Go ahead. Is that the majority of the population of Los Angeles is filled with people dissatisfied with their lives and want to reinvent themselves and be something else and achieve this brass ring that they've imagined. So they do a geographic, geographic and all go to this one center where they're all looking for some other way to be someone else and not everyone can get it. And, get and it's a lot of desperate, sad, unfulfilled souls trying to coexist. What do you think? That's yeah. yeah, seems but, accurate. But, but some good music came out of LA. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like a lot of really good music came I out of LA. I, like I, I, I would be a different person without Guns N' Roses. So let's just leave it there. Is that right? That. Different. Yeah. Yeah. That was seminal. Seminal. God, it's so weird to think about that. But back in the early days of Guns N' Roses, we were against them. Like fuck that sellout shit. Yeah. Yeah. Like in like eighty six. Fuck yeah. that sellout shit. Now they're they fucking awesome. Like glam, more glam rock. They're trying to, right? Well, then they were. Yeah. But now. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Appetite is the greatest selling album ever. Oh, I, 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 there's, there's no disputing that. But I'm saying yeah. if when. Crazy. When we were peers growing up in the L.A. scene, fuck, fuck we were the downtown art scene where we had like, you know, transvestites and dancing on stage with us. Right. And they were the Hollywood scene that had like, you know, strippers on stage with yeah. them. You know what I mean? Models, so we yeah. had we had the chicks with dicks, and they just had the chicks, and we were like, we're, you know, <laughs> yeah, fuck your sellout bullshit." Yeah. And now, you know, you were rock and roll. I think the public at large wasn't ready for dicks on on, but on now, women. Let, let's talk about the transition. See, to, yeah. to now is perfect. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is a perfect climate for 2019. It. <laughs> yeah, you should be in your element, element right this now. This is it. Yeah, start a new band. Neutrality, baby. We can, we can start can, all over. We can start all over again. Podcast guessing names for that band, but <laughs> so. Let's talk about the day Dave Navarro signed up for Instagram. Mm-hmm. Okay. You were already who you were. Yeah. Is is Ink Masters uh, in swing yet or not? I think maybe it is. Okay. Yeah. Now. That's what you want to talk about? I came all the way out here. For half a second. <laughs> 
Because no, no, no. Because we were talking about public persona. We yeah. were talking about someone. He ties it together. Who, okay, let's yeah, see. No, no, I'll, I'll bring it home. I'll, I'll see. So you're talking about public persona. You you like him, uh, you know, to be a little more within yourself. Uh, prefer not so many cameras around and things mm-hmm. like that. You're your own camera now. Yeah. Does your personality have to change? Being your own cameraman from the front row now. No, no. If anything, um, you know, put it this way, man. Just because I share stuff doesn't mean that's it. If you're looking at Instagram, it's just a slice of what I want you to see. It's manufactured. Just like everybody. Yeah, it's yeah, dude. I, I, my, my last heading before the heading I have now said this is a manufactured, uh, you know, portion of the life that I want you to think I have. Because I'm not posting the pictures of me in the fetal position crying in the corner. I won't post that one. We're doing laundry. Yeah, I won't post that one. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not posting the one of, you know, of of me first thing in the morning, like, looking beat from the night before. I'm just not doing it. I don't think most people do. But, um, no, nah, it doesn't affect my personality at all. You know, if just, any, just a little bit of the workflow, a little bit of your own PR instead of someone else ha- having to do nobody it. Nobody else either. does it, and it's generally things i like or that i'm interested in doing or that i'm inspired by i don't really have a agenda you know i don't really i don't really push anything or sell anything really you don't seem like the type of guy to have your fans have a name what do you mean like uh mariah carey's got the lambs and believers yeah i can't i can't i don't think that's your i don't i can't do that to anybody yeah (laughs) no (laughs) no man we're supposed to be living we're supposed to be living in inclusivity right now so how many people have sent you pictures of your name on their bodies? Uh, Interesting question. It Audrey. is. I've seen I've seen two or three tattoos. I figured you have to. I'm sure there's a bunch more Jane's Addiction tattoos, right? There's some good ones. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm on a public broadcast. I'm going to say that they're great and not <laughs> terrifying. Of course I am. <laughs> I don't know. I think it'd be kind of terrifying the first time someone sent me there. I have a mind. stack of restraining orders by the bedside table. That's true. But no, it, it's great. No, I, we, you know, I, we appreciate the support. And there's some good ones out there. I just I just warn that they go to good artists. Where did I, where did I see that, that somebody got a tattoo? It was like three head, like you had three heads yeah. or something. Yeah, it was not nearly enough heads. <laughs> no, it I, wasn't. If, if you were to do me properly, there should be four. Yeah, but so be what? that as it may, I mean, it was I won- fucking I wonder- awesome. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> what, what, I love that. Time. What was? What do you think? If you could dissect the thought process behind that, you know, right? I can't dissect that. How oh can you get God. into the mind? There's so much to dissect there, and we don't have the time. They should, do, is... they should do a, a documentary for Netflix about that person that got that tattoo. It's, I think there's a lot of them out there. <laughs> Let's bring it back to where you want to go. I was going to ask if um, there will be a street art episode on this upcoming no, season. I hope not. No? no, no we're not no. going to tie these I don't want to do I don't want No way. No way. I think it's a bad idea. Keep, keep I, you. Uh, I, I agree with you. I think I agree with you. I saw, I, well, I'll tell you the truth. I saw, I saw it happen with tattooing, and I, I admit that we're part, we're part of the, you know, we're one of the pieces in the machine that did this, but I watched tattooing go from a very, uh, you know, personal, loved, uh, embraced subculture to a massive global uh, thing, and not everybody loved it. Which is, has its good sides and bad sides. Right. Not everybody's a fan of that. So, you know, it's where it's at now, and, and I, I'm not going to fuck with it, but, um, you know, I wouldn't want to do that. I think, I think, especially, you know, when it comes to tattooing, someone's putting their skin on the line, it's good they're informed. But when it comes to work in the street, I think it needs to be seen in the street. You know, I don't want to fuck with it like that. I agree. Yeah. Now... So you're, so let's let's talk about the work that you're doing today and what might be coming from, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Dave Navarro playing in the street. Mm-hmm. Are are you feeling like it it's going to be time for you to go out on your own with something original, or are you enjoying playing with your buddies collab style? Um, I I've been doing a little of both. I mean, I've been very fortunate to work with and have some really amazing, just brilliant, brilliant teachers from all different you know, creative walks of life. Everybody from musical inspiration that goes into what has touched my soul to physical technicians that have taught me, you know, uh, technical aspects of of the the craft to 
in the field experience, you know, just an amazing assortment of, of teachers that, uh, you know, I do a lot of stuff on my own is, is more pointed towards healing PTSD, bringing people together, a lot of victims rights, uh, advocacy. I, uh, I don't know if everybody knows this, but when I was 15, my mom was murdered uh, by her then boyfriend. I went on to do a documentary about it called Morning Sun. Opened a lot of eyes and helped a lot of people with that. And we live in a climate, and I guess the best way to put it is that Netflix documentary, The Bundy Tapes, which just aired. It's four-hour documentary about Ted Bundy, and it's fucking fascinating. It's one of the best you know, serial killer documentaries out there. But it also really does show how fascinated we are with those who kill and not with those who lose their lives and the families that are left behind because we spent four hours looking at this one guy who's despicable human and very little time on how fascinating all these women were. Well, I he, can't name a single one of his. No, you can't. By name. No, you can't. So and that's wrong. That's what, that's what I'm saying. So, uh, that uh, that's my point of view is like if we're gonna if we're gonna spend prison reform and we're gonna do P- PTSD treatment for inmates which I'm all for I'm all for you know reducing the sentencing for minor drug offenses of course when it comes to rape and when it comes to murder and it comes to uh, multiple murder especially I feel like part of the reform has to be towards the family that's living the surviving family that's that's carrying on so. I think of anything, I'm just trying to kind of carry their voices in what I do and bring some visibility to the fact that these are, in fact, tragic losses and grief that get compartmentalized in this entertainment bubble. But the fact of the matter is that lost in the wake are countless lives. Yeah. You know, and just having a voice for them because I'm one of them. Yeah. Now, on on that topic, uh, I... You you quote a little bit of news by the cathartic and therapeutic work that you did the painting of your mom after that, mm-hmm. and it was it was controversial because it was painted in your blood. Oh, you're talking about the film, the painting in my film. Yeah, that was done by a team of artists named uh, the Cyborgs, believe it or not, Aneta and Sampa von Cyborg, and they do blood painting. So, in order to uh, kind of bookend the film. The film starts with the bloodletting, which is a process where they take blood from the most vascular part of your body, which happens to be your head. So it bleeds the most. Um, And we caught it in a glass. And then at the end of the film, they paint a portrait of my mom with the blood. And, you know, the thread would be that out of tragedy comes beauty or can come beauty. You can take something that's tragic and, and awful and make something beautiful out of it. For instance, uh, the trajectory of your life and the information you do with yourself after going through a traumatic event like that, that's on you to a degree, you know, depending on what age you are, you know, if you're not a child and, um, and turning it into something that you can give back to others less fortunate. So that's kind of where I'm at. But that's why that painting mattered in that film. Because it starts out and people are like, well, I don't understand why you got this blood painting. But I'm like, it, if you wait till the end... You know, which nobody wants to do anymore. But if you have patience and wait till the fucking end, you're going to see the tie-in. Yeah. And that's crazy. I mean, I'm just looking. I've really noticed this year, and not to discriminate against anybody of a particular age group, but I've really noticed how the younger generation doesn't have any patience or it doesn't hang in there. It doesn't put in the work like we used to. I don't know. Maybe it's because everything's easier. Maybe I wouldn't, too. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Well, it's not just an attention span thing. I, be- I believe your millennial generation today, the people that grew up native technology. Yeah, maybe, that's what I'm saying. A, 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 someone that grew up and didn't know what it was like not to have a cell phone in either theirs or their mother's hands. It's a different type of, of instant gratification in the world. Mm-hmm. This isn't the age of wonder anymore. This is the age of Google. Mm-hmm. And this is the age of arguing about what the search criteria are. Mm-hmm. It's it's how to get to your little piece of information that your brain wants right now. What's crazy, if you go into any Starbucks, you just went to Starbucks. Well, we're in Bay Ridge, so I there wasn't much of a line. Okay, but so. did you order and then the barista said, okay, what did you want? They Nine times out of ten, they do because they're not reading your order. 
They're hearing it, and nobody knows how to hear anything anymore. They know how to read your text. It's crazy. Pay attention to it. Whoa. Pay attention. You'll notice it. The younger kids now, they don't listen. The first thing, time you say something, they're like, huh? I have to wonder what's going to happen the day the power goes off. Yeah. Because it's going to happen. Yeah. And I look at these kids, they can't even count change. And I'm like, I'm going to rip you off for so much money. Yeah. They won't be able to count money back to me. I don't know. Are you a prepper? Or are you going to let the dice roll when the zombie apocalypse comes? Oh, I'm going to let the dice roll. The only thing I need I only thing I need is a direct dial to whatever, whoever the closest heroin dealer is. Cause I have I have an out plan. And write it out. Oh, oh I do. If there's if, if cancer, if uh, zombie apocalypse, whatever the thing is, if there's a thing, I have a I have a strategy. Yeah, I have an exit strategy. I this think is, most people don't. They don't. Regardless of what it is, I think most people don't even think about it. Oh, but I, see, because I've had in order to maintain any semblance of life, I had to give up a lifestyle that I loved, which was drug culture. You know, and that's and that's one of the things I bonded with Al Diaz about is. Because we were both back, we were both back in in New York City in in those days when it was like People the height. People want to romanticize it now, and they don't realize how really hard it was. Oh, to it be was here. fucking rough, and there was no texting some guy to come to your your apartment. Like you were in it. If you wanted to get better, you had to go in it. And uh, you know, in a strange way, and he he identifies with this too. Being on the street and doing art is a weird. There's a weird reminiscence of that inherent danger of being you know the desire to be in a desperate situation well no i wouldn't I, yeah i wouldn't say the desire to be but to be able to tap into that adrenaline and that that sense of if if this thing doesn't go down it's i'm gonna not go gonna bad. be okay it's gonna go bad, yeah it's right? gonna go bad if it doesn't go great it's gonna go yes bad, right? yes because right. when it goes it's the best and it's worth the risk so if you get caught, are you going to be one of those people that says, "Do you know who I am?" No, I don't think they would get. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. They don't give a fuck. Believe no. me. And I've been caught. I have been caught a number of times, and uh, I luckily have had a lot of experience of talking my way out of shit, and I was able any, to. Any tips for the young artists out there? Well, don't ever, ever, ever run. That's don't stupid. ever run. Cops don't like to chase. They don't like to chase, and they don't like lies. If you start lying, you're dead. Yeah, I always tell the young kids, just tell the truth. Just you're fucking caught, do it. Like it. at the end of the day, I figure like I'll take it. I'll take it if I have to. But you know, nobody wants to go down. But I would. It would. The one good side of that is I would eventually have to answer the charge, and I would say, hey, you know, every sign you look at out on the street, if it's not a street sign, if it's not like a traffic sign, every sign you're looking at wants our money. Everything you're looking at is trying to get your money, my money. Stay here, buy this, eat here, stay at this hotel, go on this adventure, live your life like this, right? So why can't there be an alternative voice out there in the street that is for free? We don't want anything from anybody. We're giving stuff away. You're going to throw me in jail for that? Let's go. I think we should repurpose all the handball walls in New York for legal the, That'd be legal great. Work. Like People the, hit, him, hit him all day long. Crack is whack, baby. Well, that'll never go away. No. That piece is amazing. I know. That'll I know. never go away. Amazing. So you know, simple. The, they are, uh, there is a project now in the works to allow them to at least finally start painting the green construction sheds. All the green fences you see on all the buildings under construction in New yeah. York. There's a project that's going to bring graph artists and street artists it's, to paint it, all of those. It is nice when those are, are available, but, you know... We also don't want it to be completely legal either. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, loses all the give fun. us both is what yeah. we want. If you could afford to buy a big wall yeah. in New York, you would never do that because yeah. that's not the point. Yeah, we right. only we only want both things from you guys. You know, the powers of be. That's all we want. Spaces where it's commissioned and appropriate, and we want it to be illegal, but we don't want to get in too much trouble. Too much trouble. Is right. that okay? Yes. Of course. Those are the new guidelines. These are victimless crimes. This is they like are victimless crimes. And prostitution. You can scrape most of this stuff off a wall, and most of the time you're getting way but more. But I'm hearing, I'm, I'm hearing in New York or in this on um, East Coast, they'll straight take you to jail oh, for yeah. a sticker. Oh, yep. for a sticker. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I know. We know people. And Everybody don't do it know. on a Friday because you're in jail all Space Invader. All weekend. They lost yeah. him, what, 36 hours in jail because they couldn't find poor Space Invaders who <laughs> doesn't speak hardly any English. They got every tile of that pizza thing off the fucking, every single tile by, by the Holland. Yeah. I Gone. Notice that when I, I understand. I touch every piece. If it falls in my hand, it's mine. Mm-hmm. But the people that pry things off the wall irk me on levels I don't can't begin. It's meant for the street. It should stay in the street until the street takes it back, either through a weathering, erosion, building going up, being blocked, whatever it is. Because I really believe in 50, 100, whatever years when these buildings come down, we're going to see some fun art below them. You know, it's like uh, our, our uh, city archaeology almost. I was fortunate enough uh, last year to acquire a piece of a door that Richard Hamilton oh, hit. You, really? Yeah. Wow. So that w- that's... Nobody really gave a shit about... Like, just now, you know, he died, what, two years ago, uh, I think? 17, yeah. Yeah, two years ago. Oh, and and now used to scare the crap oh out of me. Oh, my God. And it's an amazing experience. work, but he never yeah. got the real, like, notoriety. Now everybody wants a piece of, of his work, of course, because, yeah. you, you know, you can't get it anymore, but yeah. But just to structurally have a piece of it, like you said, like it's there yeah. for two. Uh, awesome. You know what I mean? It's not a canvas. It's a piece of yep. it's architecture. Like, it's a t- when, you are, when you have a legal piece of street art from the street, and we have a couple of them around that were reclaimed from buildings that the artist took it down, made a new piece out mm-hmm. of it, and gave us that, it's, it's a time capsule. Yeah. Because, again, it's meant to be impermanent. It's meant to be gone, and now you have it the right way. So, I, you know, we're, we've, we're partial to the people that take – things off the street we don't really support that yeah so let's talk about this year uh you're in new york filming the next season of ink master yeah how's that going uh, it's going good man i don't know until it comes out <laughs> at this point like i hear those lines in my sleep uh i will answer one question about that which is how real is it and the answer is it's totally real like you know we have no vested interest like we're out a hundred grand no matter who wins yeah, you know what you I mean. Watch yourself afterwards. Do you actually watch it? I watch it because I don't. They keep me away from the artists all season because they don't want us to develop friendships where we could have our voting Bias, skewed. Yeah. So when I watch it back to see how they interacted, you know, because it's interesting to That's me. That's got to be hilarious sometimes. Yeah, because I have no idea what's going on on a day to day basis. I come in, read my lines, and I, you know. Because, I mean, you've had a couple of quote-unquote villains over the years that, you know, are very good artists, but they've been really, really drama. Yeah, that's true. Except the difference for me is that once I'm done shooting, I just go home and live my life and have nothing to do with it. (laughs) It's like, okay, bye. Perfect. Now, um, do you know the future of the show? Has it been picked up another season after this? Yeah, we, uh, I think we got, season 13 just got greenlit. That's great. And we're filming 12 now. Yeah. Awesome. Good yeah, for it's you, insane. brother. It's insane. Awesome. So you yeah, got I never saw that. I never thought that I would be a game show host. <laughs> I never thought yeah. that, that. That's what I would do. But I at least... You and Donald Trump have something in common. Well, oh. yeah, we're all... Actually, do you, want, do, you want to, do you want to have your mind blown? So do you. Because you're the same thing. And that's just on a spiritual heavy level that I don't want to get into right now. Yeah. But we're all made of the same whatever. The matter. It might be a little heavy. I'll take it. We got, some, no, listen, we got some dark it's, matter it's in there. It's the truth. We're entertainment. The beauty about Sold Magazine today is um, it's a $0 enterprise. We're in no one's pockets. What? We don't have whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. There's no check for me after this? Well, listen. <laughs> Bye, guys. Sorry to break it to you, brother. <laughs> we, we, don't have, we don't owe money to sponsors. We don't owe opinions to people that write in for us. This is all about the passion of this of, is It's, of it's it. people that care and real opinions. If you don't yeah. like our opinions, you could listen to another podcast about street art, but there aren't any. So that we know. Tune in next week. <laughs> well, I just, uh, yeah, I mean, if, if I was to be a game show host, to be around insanely talented, passionate people is the best game show host to be. Yep. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I don't do tattoos, and I don't understand what they do, but I, I fucking, I have a passion for it, and I, I respect it. So anybody who comes on our show is bearing all, and so I have respect for even the first person who goes home or the last person who goes home. The victory goes to the man who enters the arena. That's a, you know, I believe that. Yeah. If you don't get out in the fucking action and risk it then you ain't got no business commenting on it. 
Yeah, you're right. Competition is inherently bullshit, Dave. When it comes to art, we're mm-hmm. comparing artists. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but technical application yeah, versus technical application is a different thing. Yeah. Think about this. You know, so we're going back to this. Any co- well, no, no, but you can think this. about it. A right, carp- carpenters can look at their craft as carpentry yes. as art. Yeah. But which house would you rather live in? Right. The one who knew how to use his tools, or the one who kind of made it up as he went along because he felt it a certain way? Fuck that. You want the guy, especially if you're putting your skin on the line and you're going into some shop and you don't know this guy. Technical application, man. That's it why all they call matters. it arts and crafts. That's oh, right. Yeah. That's right. I can do it. It's craft. Oh, is that right? That's my definite definition for something. Whenever it's out of my wheelhouse, if I can do it, it's craft. If I can't do it, I'm starting to get into <laughs> Well, the think about the artists. tattoo artists. What they have on their hands is they have to technically apply and do the work that they know how to do best to create this image that this person wants. He has to somehow become a, an armchair psychologist and talk that person through it. You know, get their customer worries, service. customer yeah. service, sales, maybe convince them, manner. convince them to go into a direction that they would rather go in because they can't do a certain thing. That, even if you're a good artist, doesn't exactly. mean you can necessarily pick up a can and do exactly. it. You could be the best artist in the world, but that doesn't mean you can use a tattoo needle. Some of that free-handed mural stuff that's mm. going on is just like, it's... Be, it's, it's like I go cross-eyed because it's beyond comprehension. So t- tell us some of the artists working today that really um, have caught your eye. Give us a, a, a couple of, of names that have really well, inspired you maybe. I mean, if, if I'm thinking about my inspirations, my inspirations go back to, you know, Basquiat, Herring, the old school days, the old graph days, um, uh, Chaz, those guys. I mean, th- I've been fortunate enough to meet some of these guys and have them do my house. So my whole house is completely top to bottom tagged with just about everybody I love. Thrashbird's a really great guy who's going up, uh, going really strong right now. Um, Tommy, who uh, I don't know if you know, Ethan does yep. the wheat paste. Ethan Alvarez. I, 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 he came to my house. I've collabed with him, actually. He's so he's sweet. So, I so, love, yeah. I love that guy. So yeah. um, he's come through, but the actually the interesting thing is that the majority of my collecting and my um my knowledge is based in the fine arts and then like you know the his, his historical art like who, scene. who in the fine art does it my favorite of all time is between and they're both like obvious contradictions but it's either Francis Bacon or Vermeer and for different reasons. Like I said, I can't choose light, light, I guess. Well, Vermeer for light for sure. And then Bacon for that visceral, just uh, energetic angst and surreal manner in which that that was conveyed. And just that physical layered textured canvas. And then you have, you can't feel it unless you're standing in front of it. How are we doing? We're doing wonderful. We, uh, I feel like I've been talking for three hours here. Oh, only an hour. Okay. But uh, take a take a phone check. Uh, next season in New York, mm-hmm. who would be a great person for you to snap your fingers and the producers bring in and start working on? As a tattoo artist? Yeah. Well, I mean, in a perfect world, the three... Coaches and my, you know. Oh, make them compete. No, no, that's oh, a fuck. I would God. love that. Oh, God, oh. I, that. I would love that. They'll never do it. They'll that. never do it. I've, oh, I've thrown that dope. idea I mean, around a million Everybody times. Everybody has. I would love to see them. Wasn't actually. that great? I know. <laughs> They're brilliant. I just got hard. But under I know, the it's great. <laughs> I know, but I think half of, the, half of the population that watches our show just wants to see them fucking Death roasted television. on live television like I they've done for I just want to see how they hold up to the pressure of time and canvases that are freaking out. I'll tell you this. Oliver, the guy to my right, the, the guy from Texas, Dallas, uh, he did my whole back probably four hours. Like, that guy just is no joke. Like, these guys just don't fuck around. These are old school, don't fuck around tattooers. What, what about doing this? Like th- this might be like out of left field, but Here they have the, the the mask singer. <laughs> but they do the mask tattooist, where you don't know who the tattooist is, 
and you have a contest. There's no name. There's no reputation involved. Yeah, but then it's nobody's in danger of being humiliated. We can't have well, that. No, sure. yeah. no, 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 no. They get unmasked after. Oh, okay, they there's yeah. still a chance to humiliate yeah, of course. them. Okay, yeah. we'll do it. It's not like a lucha league. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so there's no, there's no notoriety. Well, sometimes we do blind judging where we'll critique okay. work when we don't know who did it. Yeah. I like that the best. Yeah. That's what I mean. I like that the best. Yeah. I think a lot of times you can still pick us and pick an artist style because, like, like we were talking earlier, not every tattoo artist is going to be proficient in all of. The well, styles. that's what they would be looking for. No. Right. Right. No. That, that's what's going to make you stand out in in, in in any art genre. You know. Yeah, Dave. It looks like a lot of your work is you know American traditional, hard, bold lines, things like that. Not a ton of color. Mm-mm. So what what are you looking for as a collector or or as, as someone who is is always picking? Up I a care there? so very little now about it all. Like I just I just want someone I like tattooing something they like. You know what I mean? That's it. Because yeah. now it's just a social thing. So you know what my first few just meant everything and this represents the sun and the moon and like <laughs> you know every you know everybody's first tattoo has about 18 meanings in it oh yeah you know what i mean this is you know and they're and usually the shittiest one <laughs> and it's sweet you know what i mean like no. everybody should they you know they should mean something yeah. um but now i just want like somebody who's a homie that's gonna give me something they want to do and they're psyched about and that's it i'm like hey man i got this area you want to tattoo so it so you have yeah. a couple of spots left yeah, but I I'm not really in any hurry to. It fucking hurts, man. Let's speaking about spots left unfilled. Jane's addiction in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, sir. That would be this nice. This is a real topic. This is not just fan. Well, I'm also kind of speaking of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm kind of advocating for X to be nominated, which yeah. they're desperately in need of being nominated. So we're we're not in. I don't know if that'll ever happen in my lifetime. I think there's a lot. Of, there was a lot of talk last year. Yeah, I don't. I don't know about it. I know that we have been nominated, and I. I think you have to be a band twenty five years or longer. Is that what it is? First album, yeah. First yeah, album. your first album has to be twenty five years old. So we're long in exceed of in exceeded that, but <laughs> we'll see. That things are changing. We'll see. In, in all of the, you know, the world is changing. People change the way people get up. The way people do their things. The I mean, I can, industry is completely uh, changed. Dude, I'm so glad I'm not in it now. Or I didn't have to get going in, now, in the yeah. way it is now. Because it just doesn't work. Any tours coming up this year? No, or anything? No, no nothing for me. No. I'm just uh, I'm trying to move. I want to get a place in the Pacific Northwest and get the fuck out of the city. Add a boy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Add a boy. Yeah, yeah, Good yeah. For you. That's what I want. I'm LA, just, New York, LA, New York. Yeah, yeah I'm just go, done. Go see some trees. I'm done. Trees. Yeah. Speaking of trees, <laughs> it's that time. I might be that time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I guess that's, uh, we're well, calling it. Before we let you go, uh, just from the whole Sold family, JPO, Erica, Audrey, and uh, the contributors that couldn't be here, thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for uh, having me. It was me. a really it's nice chat. Uh, please take a second and give our listeners your street art tags and okay. Instagram tags so that they can follow you. Well, first, I just want to thank you guys and everybody in the community that has been so warm and gracious. I've, I've just, I've never met a more wonderful, balanced group of people. I mean, it really has been incredible. Um, I'm on, on like Twitter and, and Instagram. I'm just at Dave Navarro and the art page is uh, at life after death street. And I'm there, you know, and I run all of it. There's no handlers or anything like that. You don't have a whole PR department. Wait, I don't even have a manager. Add a boy. I don't believe right. in any of that. Add a boy. That's that's not a bad idea. It's I a mean, great you know, idea. It's, it's very hard to trust people. Well, I mean, you, I, if you... you when there's money, money involved, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean... Seriously. Just the, the more components that I can take out of the machine that, you know, interact with my business, the better. Yep. Well, I think. then you also have your, your voice and the message you put out is yours entirely and you know someone else isn't... That there's no one else screwing up with it. Yeah. We're putting a message out that you don't want yeah. when you're in. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And Do with that. that, ladies and gentlemen. I could are... do another couple hours, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we'll have to bring you back. We'll, we'll just bring you we'll, back. We'll, we'll do round two next year when you come back for season 13. But we are sold out with Dave Navarro.